Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I like my notes. So we're going to start with our series again. I'm sorry, my throat sounds a little weird, right? I feel like I should be like in some, some little diner singing with a guitar. Um, so we're going to start with our series again, and we're about halfway through. Can you guys believe it? What's, what's, how, many, how many pieces of armor were we talking about? How many? Six. six. What's half of six? Three. Okay. So I found a wolf. A real wolf, look at that. So what's going to happen is, because my throat is kind of really bad, I'm going to ask for a couple volunteers to help me out as we go through the first three, okay? So where's that birthday girl? Come on, you want to come help me? Come on. Everybody, let's say happy birthday to Journey. Come on, buddy, you're gonna be my first helper. This third step right here. Right there. All right. I'm gonna give you this number one, okay? You hold that up and I'll help you out in a little bit. All right, um, Emily, you wanna come help me? Let's see. Do you wanna come help me? said please you're totally gonna help me in a second um let me see where's adam i told adam come on adam come on buddy you're gonna be my number five i have to remember which ones they are <laughs> oh nor it was no come on nor all right, so let's separate you guys a little bit, okay? You two go together. You two go together. Right up here, Nor. So go ahead and open up your pieces of paper. Don't tell anybody just yet, okay? We're gonna go through this a little bit. So what I want you guys to learn with a whole series of the armor of God is that can we see the armor of God? No, what is it? If we can't see it, it's what? Invisible, right? But even though it's invisible, we have to try to remember to put it on every day. So in this series, I want you to remember that. Even after we're done learning about all the pieces, I want you to understand how every piece of armor, if we put it on every day, can change my life, can change your life, can change your teacher's life, your parents' life, your family, that neighbor, that person that walks their dog every day that you see on the street, right? It's everybody whose life it could change. Can you use your microphone, please? So we're going to go through and we're going to read every piece of the prayer for the first three pieces of the armor, okay? So you're going to say, I put on the belt of truth. Got it? Check. There. Uh, uh, I put on the helmet. The belt of truth. Uh, I, I put, put on, on the the belt, belt of, of truth. Truth. Good job. Help me love the truth. Love to tell the truth. Lord, make me like you. Let you keep me from mistakes. I put on the best of righteousness. Guard my heart, make everything that comes in or out of my heart good to you. Help my heart be open to you and easily led by the Holy Spirit. Ready? I put on. I put on. The gospel. The gospel. Shoes of readiness. Shoes of readiness. Everywhere I go, Lord, help me bring peace. Help me b be peaceful. Guide what I do and where I go. Prepare to tell, me, tell, to tell other people about you. All right, guys. Good job. Go ahead and have a seat. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we learned about the different pieces and we kind of went through all the different pieces, right? You guys saw what each and every piece of armor could look like, how it could look like in the Roman soldier days and how it could look like now. Because there's all kinds of different belts. There's all kinds of different armor, breastplates, and there's all kinds of different shoes, right? We learned that a couple of weeks ago. So let's go back to our centurion soldier. He has all of the pieces of armor, right? Is he wearing them all? Can we count them all? Start at the top, is a helmet, then the breastplate, and then we got the belt, the shield, the sword, and the sandals. What do you think is next? Belt, we already did the belt. Who says it's the helmet? You guys say helmet? Raise up your hand if you say it's a helmet. What's the next important piece of God's armor that we need? Who thinks it's the shield? You guys think it's the shield? Anybody else? Who thinks it's the sword. The sword? All right. Drum roll, please. <clears throat> ha, it's both. It's both the, the helmet and the shield. Okay? So you guys can see what the shield would look like back in the Roman soldier days, right? It's a really big shield. The back is made of wood, so it could stay really strong. The front was made of leather. Now, why was it made of leather? That's kind of weird, right? Have you guys, who are my baseball players? Where are my baseball players at? Right? When you get a new glove, can you catch a ball really well with a new glove? Can you catch a ball really well with a brand new glove? Or do you need to soften it up? Yeah, you need to soften it up, right? So how do you do that? I learned when I was playing baseball and softball that we used to put some oil on it or we used to put some water on it and we used to put the baseball in there and then wrap it around and then some people will say, put it under your mattress for the weekend because when it comes out, it's going to get really soft. So you can't, Roman soldiers couldn't do that, right? So what they did before every battle is they got their big shield and they would dip it in water. And when they would dip it in water, that leather would get soft. So when the darts would come, it wouldn't go through. And it would catch it. And a lot of the times in those days, those darts had fire on them. They were fiery darts. So that water would help extinguish that fire so they would not get hurt. Pretty crazy, huh? So another thing is that these shields, when they're really big, they get really heavy. So you can't hold the shield out like this. Because have you guys ever held something in your hand? It doesn't matter whether it's super light. It doesn't matter whether it's super heavy. You're going to get tired. So what they would do is that they would bring that shield really close to them and really tight. Because the closer that shield is to their body, the more protection they would have. And now we go to the helmet. The helmet was made of metal. Do you guys think that helmet was heavy? Yeah. The cool thing about that helmet is that it was made for a specific soldier because we all have different weird shapes of our heads, right? Like some of us have bigger ears, like I have a big head and my hair makes it even bigger. So if I were a Roman soldier, I was going to get a helmet made just for me. And that eventually what that helmet would do is that it would cover the face right here. It would cover the cheeks, it would cover the front of the head, and it would cover the back of the head. Pretty much everything except for your eyes, your nose, and your mouth, right? The more covered our head was, the more protected we were. Do you guys agree? Yeah? I feel like I'm screaming at you, but it doesn't sound like I'm screaming at you. So let me show you some helmets and some shields. <clears throat> so this is a shield. You guys know this shield? Yeah? yeah? Do you want to come hold my shield, Grayson? Come hold my shield. 
This is a helmet. Do you guys recognize this helmet? There was two boys in here that I had to ask permission to take their stuff out of their room. All right. How, is there, has there been a girl Iron Man movie yet? No, no right? Let's make one. Come on. Uh, yeah, see, come on. Come on. No? Come on. You want to put it on? Do you want to come help me? No, it's not scary in there, I promise. Come on. <laughs> so, even if she puts this on, turn around. You can hold it up right there. So, you guys recognize this helmet and the shield? Yes. Now, they look really cool, right? These are two of my favorite superheroes that Marvel has ever came up with. So, of course, we have helmets and shield of our house of our favorite superheroes. But as much as I want, hold that thing really far out. The whole time while I'm talking, Grayson, don't let it down. Hold it straight and only one arm, okay? No matter how much Grayson wants to throw this across the room, it will not come back, right? Because in the movies it comes back. But this one, it won't come back. Don't move. Don't lower it. You're lowering it. Like it was higher. <laughs> now, the helmet, the Iron Man helmet. Super cool helmet. Do you think this gives her protection? Yeah, yeah right? Her front's covered. Even her eyes are covered. She's not even looking the right way. because That's how much she can't see in there. But her whole head is covered. Protection in the front. Protection on the cheeks. Protection in the back. Super cool helmet. Is it really going to help us in a real battle? Yeah. This helmet will not make you fly. This helmet does not put on by itself, right? Not like in the movies. These things look cool, but it's not going to give us their protection. Huh? You already set it down a little bit. You're good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So let's take a look at what we need when we're talking about the helmet and the shield. What are we asking for? Because the shield is the very first thing listed in the armor of God that the soldier doesn't wear, right? Because he wears a belt, he wears a breastplate, he wears his shoes. But you're not wearing a shield. You're carrying a shield. And most importantly, what's up here? Our helmet's protecting our mind, protecting our brain, our eyes, and all of that stuff, right? These are very two important pieces of the armor that offer us the protection that we need. And we're going to go through and explain why these armors, these real armor, is covered by the armor of God. Do you guys want to see some real shields and helmet? Mason, can you come help me out real quick? And then, do you want to come help me out real quick? All right, come up here, because I can't carry this thing. It's heavy. Stand right there, bud. And what do you need? If he has a shield, what do you have? Helmet. The helmet. You want to grab that right there? So the last time I wore this helmet, I had to take my mask off because I needed a gas mask. Otherwise, my whole head would be covered. Come stand right here, bud. Put that helmet on. A little crooked, but you know what? We can make it work, right? So don't move, stay right there. Now, do you think this looks like a little bit more of what a shield would look like? Yeah. It's big. Stand on this step, Mason. That one. Does it cover most of his body? Do you think Mason can hold that up like this? With one hand? Can you lift it? You can lift it, right? I set it back down without hurting your toes. 
Now what about you? Can you feel that? Nope. Do you think you're protected? Do you feel protected? Do you feel like you're ready for battle? Right? Because what is it protecting? Your brain, right? And your thoughts and your head, everything. And that's all important. So this is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. All right, I'm going to keep Mason up here. Go ahead and go have a seat. You can't take this one home. So I'm going to show you a couple things about the shield. Now, the Roman shield was very large in size. This is very large in size. And remember, the back was made of wood. So let me show you the back of this. Let's turn it a little bit. So it has two bars. Why do you think those bars are there? To hold it. To hold it, right? Why does it have two? I don't think, and not even me, and I'm a pretty short police officer. Will I hold it up right here? So it has two because one, I want to hold it steady. Let's see, Mason, we need to come up here. So yeah, so he's holding it up right there by that top one. But if he needs to lift it up, he needs to reach down for that second one, right? So if there's a dart that's coming in, we lift it. But if we're ready and we're waiting to be ready, we set it down a little bit. So that's why those two bars are there. And that's exactly what was on the back of a Roman shield. Now the front was made of leather. Mine isn't made of leather, right? Because they don't throw fiery darts at us anymore. At least not all the time. So, try to hold that out. Come on. Oh my God. Ten seconds. <laughs> all right, don't, don't, don't fall over. It's heavy. It is heavy. It is super heavy. So this is what is called a tortoise formation. And I like that name of the formation because I have a desert tortoise and I love my desert tortoise and I thought it was really cool if this is what it was called. So this is what all the guards or all the Roman soldiers used to have when they all had shields. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Why are they lined up like that? More protection. Yep. So now... Mason, tuck yourself in. Does that look like it's right there? Do you see his feet? Do you... Show me your foot, Mason. Yep. Do you see his heart? Do you see his head? What about his hips? Do you think... Stick your foot back in, buddy. Stick your foot back in. With that shield, do you think that Mason is fully protected? Yes. So even though we wear that armor that protects our feet and our heart and the helmet for our head, that shield is the very, very first thing that any enemy is going to see. Right? They have to get through that shield before they ever get to you. So that shield is the shield of faith. Because no matter what happens, no matter what problem you come across, it's going to be your faith that you hold up right in front of you and you tuck it in really close, right? See, Mason could even see any problems that are coming across. Even though he's tucked in behind a shield of faith. So no matter what's going on, he's holding it close. He's very well protected, but he can still see what's going on. So even if... Even if I hit him, even if there's problems, I could do that because he's mine, right? <laughs> Are you hurt? Yeah, you are hurt. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> he's completely protected. All right, buddy, go sit down. So let me see if this will work. Oh, no, that's going to be too heavy. It's heavier than it looks, I promise. So there's a couple of things that that shield does. It guards you, right? 
It guards from everything and anything that's going to happen. It guards you from physical harm, but what does it do? It also guards you from any invisible problems that you might see or that you may not see because that's our faith. Because when we believe that our values are attacked, it's our faith that makes us think, nope, I'm not going to let that bother me. That's not going to make me cry. That's not going to bring me down because I have my shield of faith. And I, I remember to wear it today because I know what that is. It also deflects. Who knows what the word deflect is? I thought Dr. Nichols raised how like I know. What's the word deflect, Sky? And it goes back, right, like a dart. So if I hit this, and if I keep hitting it, and if I keep hitting it over and over and over, it's deflecting those darts, right? It's pushing them back away. So that's what your shield of faith does. Any bad thoughts that come, it pushes it away because you have that strong faith in God. What else does it do? It defends. We hold it close. We keep our faith close to us. We keep it close to our hearts and our body because no matter what, we know that our faith is stronger than anything because we, we go to ALCS. We pray every day. We know that we have our faith in God and that is strong. And of course, it stops the enemy. So when we're talking about stopping the enemy, we're talking about any problems. Anything that might make you doubt yourself. Anything that might make you think that you're not good enough. It's your faith that will always keep you strong because we stand firm. Now the helmet of salvation. You guys remember the story about David and Goliath? Yeah? Where's our David at? Who was our David? Bishop, you were our David? Let me ask you, Bishop. How, what did you take into battle when you were fighting Goliath? A what? How many rocks? Two. Were you wearing any armor? No. David right here, is he wearing any armor? No. Is Goliath wearing armor? And Goliath was like nine feet tall or something like that, right? And he still needs armor. Now people laughed at David. They're like, you are going to fight Goliath? You with no shield? You're small. You're not strong enough. You have nothing to protect you. And what did David say? I don't need it. I don't need it because I'm wearing armor that you can't see. Because I know that my armor is my faith in God and that's all that I need to protect myself. So when every soldier believed that Goliath was too big to fight, because everybody was scared. If you ever seen a story or a video about David and Goliath, Goliath comes in, he stands completely by himself in this arena, right? In this big empty circle of a space. And he's saying, who's going to fight me? Come on. And all these brave, strong Roman soldiers all stood back. They're like, oh, that's too big. Too big. But not David. They even gave him a shield and he set it down. He's like, I don't need that. A physical shield. Because he had that shield of faith. So he walked in to fight Goliath. So when everybody thought that Goliath was too big to fight, David thought, Goliath is too big to miss right? He's huge. If David could hit a little bird in a tree from very, very far away with the slingshot and a rock, do you think he's not going to hit a nine-foot giant? Yeah. How many stones did it take to bring Goliath down? One. Was it the fifth one or the tenth one? Which one was it? The first one. And I, the best part about this story is what I was learning as I was going through this is that when Goliath saw David, he saw him with no armor. So what did Goliath do? He laughed and then he took his helmet off and he set it on the floor. He's like, because I don't need that. This guy's like this size compared to me being this size. I don't need this helmet. And where did that stone hit Goliath? Right here. Pretty crazy, huh? 
If he would have kept his helmet on, do you think the battle would have been on? But Goliath wasn't ready. Because he believed strongly in that physical armor that he didn't have God's armor on. And that's what David had. See, when we're talking about the helmet of salvation, we're talking about the stuff that protects our thoughts, that protects our minds. Because sometimes... Can you guys see it over there? You guys good? Okay. So the helmet protects our head, protects our minds. Because sometimes you're going to hear, you're not good enough. Right? Sometimes you're going to hear, you're not big enough. You're not strong enough. Someone else can do that better than you. And you're going to say, nope, that's not true. Because I know what I can do. And I, ha I know God's plan for me. And it's that helmet that's going to protect those thoughts because you believe in God and your faith is strong. So our mind is kind of like a funnel. Do you guys know what a funnel is? Yeah. yeah? Big on the top, little on the bottom. So when you hear all of those bad things, you keep hearing those bad things. Because no matter what, go, this is kind of like our mind, right? We hear all of the stuff, everything, anything bad, we hear it. And it goes into our mind that's like the funnel. Because anything that goes in the top of the funnel is going to come out the bottom of the funnel. So if I put sand in the funnel, what comes out? Sand. The same thing if I were to tell you, if you hear, if you start thinking bad about other people because you hear other people talk bad about that person, do you think eventually you might say something bad to that person? Yeah, that might happen. If I put water on the top of the funnel, what comes out? Water. There's no secret, right? If I hear a lot of bad words, I might end up saying a bad word. If I don't protect myself from it, if I don't understand that's bad and I don't want that. But if we put our invisible protection, our helmet, over our mind, and we hear those bad things, what comes out? Nothing. When we hear those bad words, what comes out? Nothing. Nothing. We're protecting us from it, right? Because it's that invisible, invisible protection that we have. So you don't let those things happen. You don't let those bad thoughts come in. Because you know that God is better than that. You know that your belief in God is better than that. And that God has a plan for you. And that's not the plan that he has for you. He doesn't want you to be unkind to others. He doesn't want you to say bad things about other people. He doesn't want you to laugh when somebody falls. He wants you to pick them up because we're here to help each other out. So do you guys, let's finish up with hearing the prayers for the last two. So, do you want to help me out? Yeah, come up there. Does the funnel make sense? Jordan? Hold that for me. You could open it up. Where's Jordan? Let me pick somebody from this side. Do you want to come help me? No. <laughs> come on. Go stand up there, bud. And then let me get a third grader. Um, yeah, with the buns right here. <laughs> Nalia. I don't like people when people say my name wrong, Nalia. So I don't like saying other people's name wrong. So go ahead and open them up. Are we by the number? So this is my seven. Are you my eight? What number are you? What number are you? You need to get in between seven and nine. Go ahead and open those up. So what was the first piece of armor that we learned about today? Or the new one that we learned about today? The shield. You ready? All by yourself or you need me to help you? Yeah? Hi. Hi. Put on. Put on. The shield of faith. The, the shield of faith. 
Build a strong faith in me. With faith, all things are possible. Protect me from any attack from the enemy. I put on the helmet of salvation. Please protect my mind from bad thoughts and help me focus on the things that are good. Please protect me, my eyes, and keep me looking up to you. Thank you. Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and have a seat. So if you listen to the prayers, you will hear, help me. Help me remember you. Help me look up to you. Help me through all of these troubled times. And that's exactly what the armor of God does. So we went through five pieces of armor, right? How many more do we need? One? One. We went through five pieces and the, piece, the armor has six. So when we're looking at it, how many more do we need? Which piece of armor are we going to learn about next? The sword. Now when we started this series and I asked you which was the important piece of armor... A lot of you said the sword. But look at what we've learned. The sword is the very, very last piece. Right? It's pretty big. And it does give the soldier something to work with. But the soldier isn't going to be able to use that unless he has all the other protection that's needed. And that Ephesians talks about in the Bible. Okay? Are you guys going to be ready for the sword? Yes. All right. All right, let's close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting me be here today with the ALCS kids and teaching them about the armor of God and helping them learn about the, that invisible armor that we could put on every day to protect, protect us from any harm, protect us from any bad thoughts and be with you and follow you and to help out others do the same. Let us go today with patience, with peace, and let's enjoy today. In Jesus' name, amen. You cross the